Here we go. Hello, everybody. This is Barbara Drazga with the Bundle Masterclass. And tonight, we are going to talk about how to discover fanatical niche markets. Better than that, I've got a, a little bit of a presentation kind of outlined to keep us on track, but we're going to do some live brainstorming. And that is unscripted, and we never know where that's going to go when we start going down these rabbit holes um, in, in some of my webinars. <laughs> so uh, so uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm just going to come over here and say a little bit hi to everybody. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being on here today. And um, get a pad of paper and a pen because this will go fast. And when I start brainstorming and my brain starts going doing the creativity thing, uh, it, I never know where it's going to go, and you've got to capture that information. <laughs> So anyway, um, let's just scooch back over here and uh, we'll, we'll just go ahead and get started. So how to discover fanatical niche markets in the context of bringing products to Amazon's marketplace that we own in the form of bundles. So a, pr a bundle of products, but for a specific niche market. And if you've ever heard me speak before, you know I'm very big on doing customer-centric research before you ever look at a product. So this is kind of the first part of that process. Uh, and the, the way that um, this webinar came about is because I had a couple of people on my webinar from last week, actually more than a couple, and then in the Facebook group that said, well, what do you do if you're not creative? So I've challenged everybody that we are all creative beings. We were born creative beings, every single one of us. And uh, it was kind of adulted out of us, right? We're kind of um, schooling, et cetera. We were trained to be less creative, to, to fit into a certain box or, or, or path, I think, is what happens. But that creative being is not dead. I swear to you, it is alive, and it's just this little ember inside of you. And I'm going to show you how to fan that flame tonight and uh, how you too can be creative, okay? So here's a book recommendation right out of the gate. Are you ready? One of my favorite books. Let me stop the share here so I can show you. And any anybody who's any of you who's a student of my bundle masterclass, you uh, know. Oh, it's backwards on my screen. I hope y'all can can see it. Um, I recommend this highly in my class. Uh, How to think like Leonardo da Vinci. And um, don't wouldn't you agree that Leonardo is like one of the most creative figures in history ever? Right. Uh, along with you know, Einstein, and you know, he's a scientist, so people think, well, he's left brain linear, but Einstein's got to be one of the most creative individuals in the history of the world, right? So this book, How to Think Like Leonardo da Vinci, is one of my very favorites, and there's also a workbook you can get with it where you can work through his different um, uh, methods for being creative, okay? And some of it's in Italian, which is kind of, <laughs> which is kind of fun, um, art, senza, senza, right? And then there's an accompanying workbook you can get where you work through each one of his ways to be creative. Uh, right now, I'm on this chapter, which is all about high-performance learning, which is kind of cool, right? How to, uh, when I'm learning something new, how to make sure that I'm truly focused and present when I'm learning, like I hope you are tonight, and um, so I can uh, take the information um, in, in, a more, uh, in a way that's more solid and long-term and stays with me, and I can integrate into my natural way of thinking. Anyway, so how to think like Leonardo da Vinci workbook. Uh, well, the book itself and then the workbook. This is the workbook by Michael Gell. Uh, if you think about it, go get it. Love it. Um, so how else can we be creative? So let's just uh, scooch over here to the presentation, and I got a few ideas for those of you who are visual learners and need to see the words written down. Uh, we will go over here and boom. So tonight we're going to talk, today we're going to talk about two things. Real simple, discovery, and that means uh, discovery of passionate niche markets, right? Niche markets that have passions or they have problems that we, we can solve by creating a product bundle. So we're going to talk about discovery and how to get into that creative mode, even if you think you're not creative, because I challenge you, you are, I believe in you. And then where to find inspiration, you know, when you're, we're sitting there like a writers with a blank page and they, you, where do you start? The, that beginning sentence won't come out, but once you start a, uh, writing on that blank page, it sort of unfolds. So sometimes we just need that creative spark, that little spark of inspiration, and I'm going to give you a ton of ideas today on um, things that actually happened to me this week and in the past couple of days, personal experiences today at the airport, for example. I was thinking about what I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight, and I just looked around me and found a bunch of inspiration. So I'll share those actual ideas with you tonight. And then validation, how to take those uh, re re what look like really passionate niche markets, but then validate it with numbers and data 
so that we're not just falling in love with an idea or a product. We are actually validating ideas and products with data because uh, it's, it's too easy to fall in love with something and too many people make the mistakes of they fall in love with, oh, this is so cool, this is so sell. You know you've all done it, right? We all have, me too, right? And then uh, we, we toss a bunch of it in there, we, we invest a lot of money, we throw it into Amazon and a big kerplunk, right? Big black hole sound, if there is a sound for black holes, and it doesn't sell. It's because we didn't validate it against data, what Amazon is telling us, that it will actually sell. There's actually a market for it. There are actually people searching for it. So discovery and creativity is awesome, and then you must validate your ideas with data. And I'm gonna show these two pieces to you tonight. So, y'all ready? We're gonna, uh, we're gonna just kind of forge ahead here. Here we go. So discovery, where do you find inspiration? First thing, go to a bookstore, you know, that's an easy one. Go to the magazine rack, um, go to trade shows. So I was just at a trade show where all these different vendors, uh, and it wasn't a niche trade show, which means uh, there was vendors in every single category you can imagine or not imagine. And I saw, pro just walking up and down the rows, I saw product ideas and niche market ideas and uh, like fanatical niche market ideas that passions that I did not know existed and products that were solving a problem the problem I didn't know existed um, advertisements television uh, magazines just the advertisements in there because if companies are spending ad dollars on print ads and uh, and website ads you know they've done the research to validate that those, that those advertisements are giving them a return on their investment right how-to books. This is a fun one. So if you just Googled, um, I found some fun how-to uh, niche uh, books today uh, that I'll share with you in the next slide. Um, so if you just Google uh, niche how-to books, like how to start a chicken farm, um, how to X, Y, Z, uh, you'll find some really funky niche markets and actually a how to find a, a start a chicken farm or raise chickens was actually one of the books I found as an example. Um, catalogs, let me stop sharing because I want to show you this catalog that I got uh, in my pile of mail after being gone um, for a few days. I've got this pile of mail that came back and this, I know you all have seen this, right? Carol Wright Gifts uh, and a lot of the things that they have in here you're going to see on the, the advertorials like the late night television, right? Uh, that, that we all buy at 2 in the morning, we're like, oh, that's cool, and we buy it. We've all done it. <laughs> yeah, I have, right? But they have some really interesting, this catalog is full of, um, if you look past the product and you look at the who would buy this and why. Oh, by the way, if you're my bundle masterclass, you know those are my big questions. Who would, when you look at a product, to figure out the niche market be, behind it, you ask these questions. Write them down. You ready? Who would buy this product? Why would they buy it? And what else would they buy? And there's no one right answer for anything. So when you ask who would buy this product, you're going to generate a list of ideas of what type of pro uh, a person is buying this product, but then why are they buying it? Is it solving a passion or is it meeting a passion or solving a need? Um, so who would buy this product? Why would they buy it? And then what else would they buy? And those are the, the basis for um, the, the customer centric research that we talk about. So do you just get, when you get one of these catalogs, we usually toss them away, right? Uh, but now I open this up and I find uh, there's this guy here, this, you know, vegetable slicer. So who would buy this? Somebody who cooks organic. I just got an arrow garden in my kitchen for Christmas and it's growing all sorts of things. Like I got to cut things back every couple of days because it's overgrowing. So somebody who likes to cook at home, um, you know, cook close to the source, I call it. So a lot of vegetables, et cetera, um, might buy this. And then what else would they buy? You know, what else do I use in the kitchen when I'm making a fresh, um, you know, with organic vegetable salad, what else, what other tools do I use when I have this? Just as an example. And you just flip it open and you start researching. So this is just my ideas. What else? Let's get back to the uh, share screen. So you guys are all taking notes, right? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> People watch. This is fun. Uh, when I got off the plane, I just decided to sit for a minute <clears throat> and do some people watching. And there were all means of people coming through from little itty bitty girls with these cool little like um, uh, unicorn backpacks with a little, a little stuff. You know, she must have been about three years old. She was so cute. She had a unicorn uh, headband on with little ears and she had her unicorn teddy bear or teddy uni, uni, unibear. <laughs> what is that? Right. And she had this little backpack with unicorn. She was all unicorn out. The t-shirt with the unicorn, the little light up unicorn sneakers. It was crazy. Talk about fanatical niche market. Um, and it was just fun. There were, I'll show you in a second um, some of the other uh, niche, niche ideas I got just by people watching. 
going to a video store, and by video I mean not video store, you know they're gone, but the video game store, right? So you can idea, get a niche market ideas by looking at all of the video games. Just look at who they're targeting, what their topic matter is, you know, are there are a lot of zombie games, are there a lot of, right? What kind of games are there? Are there mystery games? Uh, boutique store. So boutique stores would be like for a really niche market. Have you ever gone to your ladies, gone to your hairdressers, guys too, um, or gone to get your nails done, and they have this little boutique section, and they have some really funky stuff, um, small quantities, but maybe we never thought of that particular product before. So boutique stores, they, the owners of boutique stores search out really cool, neat, different, unusual products, and then just ask. So pro ideas are everywhere. Inspiration for our ideas are literally everywhere once you take the blinders off and um, you just open your eyes to looking around and then you can ask people they okay, never ask people how you doing today I ask them or, or not how you doing I'll say um, uh, what's new and exciting today right to get make it a positive vibe and then when somebody asks you so what do you do um, I never ask that question I ask instead so what's your passion because you get to the heart of somebody a lot faster when they start sharing their passion. Everybody has that little, you know, 30 second eleva elevator pitch in their head. What do you do to answer that question? But you kind of short circuit that and um, put people kind of, oh, uh, my passion. And it might not actually be what they do for a living, right? So you can really create a quick connection with someone and get to know them um, pretty quickly on a, on a little bit of an intimate level if you start by asking, so what's your passion? And, and what, what else is your passion? What do you and your family like to do when you go on vacation? Is there like a special city you like to go to or some sort of cool hobby or sport you like to do? So asking um, questions that help you kind of weed out what people would be passionate about is a really powerful thing. Um, you can also do that in Facebook groups. You can just ask friends and family in your Facebook groups uh, or your Facebook page. So, uh, so uh, does anybody have any fun summer plans? And just let them answer it to get ideas for passionate markets. Okay. So here are just a few ideas. One of the uh, ebooks, niche ebooks, I found while I was searching on the uh, plane for you guys was uh, chicken keeping. How to how to be a chicken farmer raiser. I'm not quite sure what they're called, but you do a little bit of research on that to see if a lot of people or little people are searching for it. How to beat your dad at chess. There's an ebook called How to Beat Your Dad at Chess. So that I thought was really cute. So I mean, the bundle ideas for that one are they're they're already bouncing around in my head. Um, Knitting with dog hair. I can't make this up. There is a how to knit with dog hair ebook. I didn't know there was such a thing. Okay, which leads me to think my brain goes down. Okay, taxidermy. There's an interesting niche market that you could build bundles for, right? Um, CrossFit. And this was a guy who was standing in line at security um, at the airport, had this big CrossFit t shirt on it. And he was like buff and everything. I thought, okay, well, men, women, teens, CrossFit. Uh, is a passion. Unicorns and travel, that little girl with the backpack and everything else was so cute. Flamingos. Now, I do not understand this passion and that's okay. You don't have to understand it um, in order to build bundles around it. But the way I learned about flamingos was one of my suppliers at ASD, I was placing an order uh, for unicorn products, of course, all things, right? And some other uh, related products. And um, one of the products had flamingos all over it. And I asked him, so what are your, some, some of your best-selling themes? And he said, oh, the flamingos hand down. <laughs> I, down. I said, are you sure? You're not just trying to unload product on me. Uh, he says, no, of course not. Uh, flamingos, this, this product with flamingos on it, if the flamingos are one of their best sellers and he doesn't understand it either, and their tar their, um, one of their biggest buyers is Marshalls, for example. So these giant retail stores are buying things with flamingos because apparently it's a thing. Now we'll have to validate that because I don't understand that market. Uh, another market that I discovered recently was, I'm going to switch back side to show you this. This is loads of fun. So uh, I was, uh, it came up in my, um, it came up in my feed in Facebook. A, uh, it was an, it was a news story. And these fishermen, I don't know if you've heard me tell the story, these fishermen were, um, they were out fishing, right? And uh, there was something flapping around in the water that did not quite look like a fish, or it was a really big fish. And they got closer and discovered it was a woman dressed up like a mermaid. Yeah, if I could do a mic drop right now, <laughs> right? So they interviewed, and it was not tongue-in-cheek, it was not like satire. They started interviewing these, these women. They showed these four or five women who they have... Um, mermaid names 
it is their alter ego. A lot of times they're very shy and maybe they have social anxiety, but when they become mermaids, they become these other people. So I, and, and in, the, you, in the interviews, you, they showed their houses with shells everywhere and they've got this jewelry on and they transformed when they were mermaids into these completely other amazing creatures. Um, and it's kind of a crossover from unicorns too, unicorns, mermaids. It's kind of the same market. And there's makeup they wear with these beautiful bejewels. And so I did a little, I did a little research and um, I went to a uh, supplier to find out what this was all about. And check this out. This is a mermaid wig. How cool is this, right? That I picked up for $3, right? And this is, ta-da, it's a mermaid wig. Wow. This is Mermaid Barbara. You guys can make up my mermaid name in the chat. Go ahead. Tell me what you would call me and my, what would my mermaid name be, right? Picture me as a mermaid, right? So the mermaid market, crazy fanatical market. The keyword research on it is off the charts. And there's so many mashups you could do, like mermaid birthday party for girls, for women, um, dog mermaid birthday party. Uh, how about a party for... Um, uh, like a like you know a party a sleep a slumber party for for little girls to dress up like mermaids right so your bundle is going to be a bunch of mermaid stuff but for ten girls just off the top of my head so the mermaid market big market right and then the unicorn market okay I could be a, a unicorn mermaid but there's my unicorn horn ah there we go this is my unicorn horn right so I've got a bunch of these a bunch of these unicorn horns. <laughs> So you can do all sorts of fun stuff with mashups between, ah, mer after I fix my hair, mermaid, <laughs> mermaids and unicorns. And these are just a couple of ideas I'm throwing out um, uh, just to get your, your brain juices going, okay? So uh, let's, keep, let's keep going here. Yes, I use props. <laughs> I hope you guys are taking, <laughs> oh, oh, Sapphire. Okay, Renee was the first one to name me. My mermaid name is officially Sapphire. Okay, thank you, Renee. <laughs> Okay, so let's just keep going. Share screen, and here we go. So, oh, a Rastafarian. I saw this guy walking through the airport who was totally, completely Rasta. I mean, he had like these cool, like, like bubble pants and and the rainbow and the thingy and the dreads and uh, even like his luggage was kind of like uh, like canvas looking. He had the whole look. It was so cool. Like if I could take a picture of him as the poster child for Rastafarian and make him like my um, uh, my lifestyle photo where he's wearing something I'm selling this Rasta, I would have. It was very cool. Um, and then uh, the other word that came to mind when I saw him was um, like beatnik and you know flower child things like that. That is a niche market. We have to validate it, but these are fanatical niche markets. And gnomes and clowns. So. Uh, I went to watch a movie last week, that new kids movie that, that was out uh, based on a children's book, and um, in the previews, it showed a preview of a movie coming out soon uh, based on gnomes, garden gnomes. Now, for some reason, garden gnomes are a thing. People like garden gnomes, but they like like figures, like funky figures of garden gnomes, right? Um, so like a zombie garden gnome and things like that. So gnomes are a big thing. But now that the movie's coming out, it's going to be even bigger because people are going to be searching for it. You're going to get free advertising for gnomes and get it, uh, people, are, it's going to be in their consciousness more because um, this movie's going to be, start being advertised everywhere. So you do a, a gnome-related uh, bundle for that market. We'll have to validate that market, of course. Clowns. Uh, and that was, um, there was this lady uh, at an event I was in last week. I, I took a, a couple of hours off and they had this uh, walking area in San Diego. Uh, I forget the name. It was a park, and there were all these street performers, and there was this lady there doing these uh, these balloons. And I start talking, you know, balloon animals, and I start talking to her, and she says, "Yeah, there is a clown association. Uh, you go to clown school, and you can learn all these different things that clowns do, uh, including like the balloons and the the balancing and the juggling and all that cool stuff." I had no idea something like that was real, but there's like an association of clowns. Who'd have thunk, right? So these are just a few ideas I came up with this afternoon or the past day or so for fanatical niche markets, but it is by no means not even close to a complete list. Please don't, you know, don't go off and create bundles for this stuff without validating it. I just wanted to give you an idea of how I got to these, I, these ideas. So instead of listing the ideas, I told you how I found the ideas. And my wish for you is that you know, I'm giving, hopefully giving you tools to teach you how to fish instead of just handing you a fish. 
So if I'm not around in your little head um, to help you, or in little head, if my little voice isn't in your head, you know, available to you to help you brainstorm, I want you to start seeing things with childlike wonder so that you're uh, able to start learning this creative process yourself without me, without me around. So uh, let me just go over and check the chat here and see if anybody's got uh, anything that maybe they're lost on. There we go, fairy garden, 70s flower child. It's a Jamaica thing, mon. If you're gonna say that, you have to say mon. Who is Rasta? Okay, <laughs> you guys are hilarious. You guys are pretty funny. So let's just keep going. So in the chat, I want you to tell me things that you are passionate about, but not just you. Think about like, um, you know, uh, if you go to PTA meetings, parent teacher meetings, right? And you're sitting with other parents and you're talking about what you did for the weekend and, and they've got some cool hobbies that you didn't know about. Um, or you're, uh, you're meeting with your mastermind group and somebody says, yeah, I, I went hang gliding this weekend in a clown suit. I don't know if that's a real saying, but um, go ahead and put in the chat things. What are you passionate about? Um, what things do you see around you and hear around you from your neighbors and your friends and people you just see, you know, in the grocery store and, and uh, maybe walking through a parking lot. It could be, um, you know, a car that's been dressed up like a mouse or something uh, or has a trailer on it with an a ATV. So anything visual can spark your creativity. So go ahead and let's start flexing your inborn creative muscle and tell me in the chat some passionate niche markets that you've come across. So I'm going to go in the chat here and see what we got. So we have rock painting, tomato, tomato gardening. Awesome. Good stuff. Stuff to share so I can interact with you guys. Gardening. Here we go. Wow. You guys are awesome. Holy cow. I got to scroll way far up. Look at all these great ideas. I will make sure that I save this chat um, and get it in the Bumble Masterclass group because I'm not going to be able to list all these off, and there's so many cool ideas that we can uh, verify and or validate and go have fun with. Toll painting, Western decor, stamp collecting, uh, wow, learning foreign languages. Yay, me too, Gab Gabrielle. I love being a polyglot. I know you do too. We should uh, kind of talk and see which languages we share. Um, knitting, sewing, traveling, Dalmatians. Interesting. Triathlons, horses and cats, yoga, nature of mind, Buddhism, instant pot. Uh, so cooking thing, huge niche, woodworking, metal smithing, gardening, gym, roller hockey. Hmm. I never heard of roller hockey. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, let's see, rock painting, wool applique. That's so cool. Look at all pet adoption. How neat is this? Plant-based eating. Yay, Jody. Rock on. Eating, gardening. I need to be with the beach. Got it. Corgis. Ooh. Theology, philosophy. Look at all these amazing niche markets that this is awesome. Thank you. Uh, astrology, healthy lifestyle topics, meditation. Wow. Thank you for sharing, guys. Keep sharing in the chat because I'm going to save this chat so we've got it in a text file and I can put it up in uh, the Bundle Masterclass group so everybody can keep, you know, keep going with this brainstorming. Just to, it's like, you know, it's like working out. The more you do it, the healthier and easier it gets. You know, initially it might be a little, a little bit hard and a little bit uncomfortable, um, and that's okay. Uh, just the more you practice it, the, the, the stronger these creative muscles will get, I promise you. Scrapbooking, 18-inch dolls. That's really specific, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Quilting. Great uh, standard pools. Great ideas. And you, tobogganing. How cool is that? Do you need snow to toboggan? Or you can you can toboggan on, like, uh, with wheels or something? Is there a version of that? Uh, just curious. So college football, ballet. This, now, what if you put college football and ballet together? That would be interesting. <laughs> Swimming. Okay, great. Keep going. And there we go. Jamaican bobsledders. Now start putting all these things together. Fantasy football, right? This is fun. On wheatgrass. This is awesome stuff, guys. Okay, so I'm going to go back into sharing the screen and keep going. Keep going with your um, uh, street luge, X games, good stuff. I'm going to keep going with the presentation, and you guys keep putting in the chat things you're passionate about. So here are a few ideas. We got that already. So mashups. So let's talk mashups real quick. So I like to put um, two different or more uh, fanatical niche markets together, like, for example, um, people who love mermaids and unicorns. That's kind of an obvious one because it's a little bit of crossover. But somebody said Dalmatians in there. 
So let's say um, instead of Dalmatians, it would be elderly Dalmatians or older Dalmatians. Um, maybe there's a specific health problem that I, I know that um, uh, German shepherds, I believe they have, they, they tend to have hip problems, right? So it could be elderly dogs or small dogs and unicorns, right? So I like mashing up two hot niche markets or passions and putting them together to create a bundle that will increase my keyword research hits, right? So here's just one idea. If we take organizational tools as a niche market, then we mash it up with something like professions. So if you were to brainstorm different professions, what would they be? Let's think about professions. So, you know, doctor, lawyer, dentist, teacher, stay-at-home mom, entrepreneur. Um, how about uh, uh, somebody who, a uh, truck driver, okay? Uh, help me brainstorm this, guys. I need your help. So what are different professions? And I bet you could Google different professions and in Wikipedia would tell you a gazillion different professions, right? And then you start um, validating the idea and then creating bundles for uh, organizational tools for different professions or different decor styles, right? Uh, stop share here so I can come over and see you. Okay, so teachers, mechanics, engineers, salesperson, food, truckers, hairdressers, lawyers, uh, uh, baristas. Think of, are they every, think about your day as you go through the day, where do you start? How about mailmen, right? Or, or uh, the UPS store or uh, small boutiques, right? Um, hairdressers, whatever, bikini barista. So financial analysts, actuary, uh, how about a, um, a crematorium leader, right? Uh, uh, how about a, a veterinarian, um, a veteran, right? An insurance agent, nurses. So think about organizational tools for these niche markets. So organizational bundle, but for niche markets that meets the needs that are specific to, for example, dentists. So dentists might have a need organizational tools that require um, little round holes that they can put their tools in and also little, uh, you know, organization. So that the small boxes to hold little teeth and little, you know, small doodads that you use your dentist. And I'm pretty sure doodads is not the technical term for it, but that's what I know by bartender, right? How about a tattoo artist? I went to a tattoo show, believe it or not. I have no tattoos. I don't get the market, but. There was a show, you know, billboards all over the place a couple of weeks ago uh, in here in Phoenix. So I went down to the tattoo show to just get ideas. And then right next to that tattoo show was a reptile show. So I went to that show as well. It's just like this trade show with a lot of really fanatical people about that market. And that was just to get ideas for, the, for those markets and understand that market better, to understand those customers better. You know, what do they buy and why do they buy it? And then what else do they buy? to create bundles to meet those market. And that these tattoo artists um, have very specific needs, right? And they have organizational needs. So that's just one idea. So mash up uh, one idea with another idea. Okay, so we're gonna go back to sharing the screen. Corporate librarians, restaurants, salespeople, writers, great ideas, guys. Okay, so here are some other ideas. Um, organizational schools for different decor styles. Now, I like mid-century modern, in case this picture behind me didn't uh, tip you off. Um, I like mid-century modern, which is like 1940s, 50s, 60s stuff. And um, so I would look for organizational uh, products that would meet that decor style. There's shabby chic, there's French provincial, there's Tuscan style, there's kids rooms, decor style for like, you know, happy kids rooms, right? Um, geographic areas, so organizational tools for people who live in Arizona might be different than organizational tools for people who live in, on the East Coast, for example. Uh, how about living situations? So organizational tools for people who RV, who have tiny homes, who have giant homes, uh, who um, rent out their homes, so their Airbnb. Uh, organizational tools for age groups. So organizational tools for, for instance, I'm, I'm you know, um, I'm not saying how old I am. Oh, what the heck. I'm in my 50s, right? So I have all these, all these different really cute uh, reading glasses, but all different colors based on the decor I'm wearing. Does that supply, does that like, but I, I have it in this mid-century modern yellow plastic container on my desk, right? So organizational tools for uh, people um, for you know any age group for kids all the way up to baby boomers where we need organizational tools for the things that are important in our lives at this particular point in our life right uh, organizational tools for hobbies now we just listed a bunch of hobbies right in the chat so think about all of those hobbies think about what organizational tools would be needed 
or useful for all of those hobbies that we thought of. And you can actually just Google hobbies, list of hobbies, and just get a list. That, I mean, it's, it's the internet. Google is your friend, right? And you know, list thousands probably of different hobbies, but then create organizational tool bundles for different hobbies. Um, sports. So uh, and what, uh, an, an offshoot of the sports is not just organizational schools for uh, tools for kids who play football or, or uh, uh, people who like pool, right? Uh, it's also, what about sports teams, colors? Um, but not putting any logo on it, all right? Not um, selling any uh, you know, fake product. It's not what I'm talking about. But if um, sports teams, uh, like if the colors were, I think Denver Broncos is blue and orange off the top of my head. So what if you had an organizational um, bins in blue and orange that would be bought by people who like that color combination because of a sport, certain sport or team that they're interested in, or a country they're from, right? An Italian themed organizational tool set with Italian flag colors on it, for example. Another mashup, organ, organizational tools for people with a handicap of any kind. Now my mom, uh, bless her heart, was, um, she was an ampu above knee amputee. And after her amputation, she had different needs. Um, for her kitchen organization, her bathroom organization, her uh, closet organization, her bedroom, everything changed. So we needed um, different tools for her, different organizational systems for her for based on her handicap. Um, and also, how about organizational tools for that wheelchair itself or um, for people who are uh, uh, maybe hearing impaired or for kids who have um, maybe uh, a learning disability, right? So think about mashing up one um, highly trafficked keyword market like organizational tools and, and other um, passionate markets or problems that need to be solved. Does that make sense? Are you guys all taking notes? All right, I'm gonna come over here to the chat and make sure that uh, you guys understand what's going, what I'm doing here because I know I'm going fast, but I, wa I want you to understand the concept of mashing up. So how are we doing here? Uh, love MCM house sitters, organizational tools for Trump, uh, for okay, wow, trompe oil art. I'm not quite sure if that's a typo or if I don't know how to say it. It's probably I don't know how to say it. Can you use products of Denver Broncos colors without a violation? No, you may not, but there's a way that you can market Denver Broncos fans off Amazon and drive them to your organizational bundle on Amazon. Uh, same question about professional teams is above. No, uh, if, if any of you who know me, and there are quite a few of you on here, uh, you know that I say always follow Amazon's terms of service. I am not one to do the gray area or skirt around the rules and then justify and oh, I won't get caught. And other people are doing it. And no, it's Amazon's uh, sandbox and follow Amazon's rules. Period. But you can still drive traffic. Maybe do a um, you know Facebook ad for Denver Broncos lovers right, into your Amazon listing, but that listing, the, the, um, the reason for keywords on Amazon is to get people who are searching on Amazon to find your product. And if Amazon is restricted, your, your use of a licensed or restricted brand of using those keywords, you can still sell if those colors are, you know, blue and orange, um, you can still sell the product, but you won't be getting the traffic so much from Amazon, but you can create your own traffic. And in the Bundle Masterclass, we talk about how to create your own off Amazon traffic to sell your Amazon uh, bundles, you know, to sell the products that um, you've got up in FBA in Amazon. Does that make sense? And we'll talk more about that in the Bundle Masterclass. I just want you to get the brainstorming concept down. How are we all doing with the, the mashup concept? Okay, do you then combine another category other than uh, organizational tools with the list of professions, hobbies, what some other, ma well, um, so I'm gonna read asks, a little bit more about mashups. That was just one example of using organizational tools and uh, a bunch of other, you know, um, niche markets. So I challenge you guys to come up with two other niche markets, right, that are uh, highly trafficked, and do some mashups of your own. But you can use that list I showed you and just fill in the blank, right? So instead of organizational tools, it could be travel tools for. And then you have your list of professions that you listed out and say, okay, what do um, traveling lawyers need when they travel? What, or how about uh, female executives? Do they have different travel uh, accessory needs, for example? Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, triathletes that are teachers. That's interesting. Beginners, tools, starters. How about an artist that travels? And what kind of artists? You know, do they do big you know, um, these giant like wall arts or are they uh, clay artists or I don't know, or traveling clowns? What kind of travel needs do they, so you see what I'm doing? We take one 
um, kind of broader category like travel or organizational tools, and then we niche it down to um, really fanatical markets or a specific need or, um, or problem to solve. Make sense? Okay. So I want you guys to go practice that uh, today. That's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I'm not going to answer specific questions in here about creating bundles because this particular webinar is just about how do we get our creative juices flowing and start brainstorming ideas and then validate those ideas. So I want to be true to that, um, that commitment to bring that, that data to you. And you can go over to uh, my Facebook group. It's, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll make sure it's in the chat, but you can go to uh, uh, facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva and, uh, and ask some more questions in there unrelated to the topic of this webinar. So it's facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva and that is spelled D-E-A-L-D-I-V-A and ask, continue to ask questions in there that are more niche in nature. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the presentation here and keep going. So I hope you guys are taking notes. <laughs> All right, so mashups. So let's do some live brainstorming. I know this is what you guys were waiting for. So let's come over here and um, we're gonna uh, pick a market and since I'm kind of sort of already in the whole, uh, um, this whole um, unicorn and, and uh, let's just do the unicorn. So let's say travel and unicorns. So one of the places that I like to start um, is uh, just go on. Amazon just to get some ideas, right? So I'll just put in, um, how about a uh, unicorn back or travel, travel. All right, and see what comes up. And then I'll also go, and you guys know one of my favorite tools is Merchant Words. Uh, and I've got a list of different tools I use for uh, keyword research um, just to sort of flesh out a market. Um, and I've got a list of those in, in this presentation. So hang on and you'll get that list. So I might come over here and say, okay, how big is the world for mermaids? Let's start with that, mermaids. How big is the mermaid world? So I just do a Google search. Apparently there's a movie out. Uh, there's some sort of movie, there's Wikipedia, right? Just to get some ideas, what, are mermaids real? That's kind of interesting, fact check for mermaids. It's kind of, <laughs> okay, mermaids attacked by giant shark. Um, there's a mashup, sharks and mermaids, okay. Um, how about um, mermaid dress up? And all I'm doing here is just playing around in Google to see how big this mermaid thing is, right? Uh, mermaid dress up Amazon. Interesting. Let's come over here. And and it's it's this is one of the times when it's okay to go down rabbit holes and get lost, right? So here's just some mermaid dress up stuff. It's like okay, this is interesting. I don't see adult stuff, but how about, uh, let's try, uh, <laughs> try mermaid, mermaid party and see what happens. Look at this. All, and these are like uh, Google, um, uh, Google shop, shopping, right? There's Party City at Mermaid, uh, or at, I'm sorry, Mermaid Supplies at Party City. How about we do uh, mermaid, um, what was I just thinking? Um, dog, oh, par birthday party. Let's see what comes up with that. About a 20 magical mermaid. Oh, I remember what I was search for. Check this out. Mermaid. Okay, are these? This is a mashup. You ready? Mermaid wedding. You ready? See what comes up. 3,800,000 results for mermaid wedding. Let's just go over to images. And you can also go to Pinterest too. And now we're just kind of fooling around and messing around and see how, see how big this market is. I, we don't under, I don't understand the market, the mermaid wedding market, but let's see if it's a thing, right? So we'll do uh, mermaid wedding. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Skip for now. Boom. Mermaid wedding. And you guys can play along too. Just open, <laughs> open, a, open a browser and play along. Mermaid wedding. It is a thing. Look at, look at the, just, I don't even know where to start with this. Mermaid wedding. Look at all these Pinterest pins, boards, whatever. Look at this dress for your little mermaid wedding, right? This is crazy cool, right? These are people who, there's mermaid dresses. And as you start poking around in this kind of broad topic, you'll start getting ideas of how to dig deeper in this topic, right? So how about wedding um, mermaid wedding supplies. So you could do a whole bundle for a um, for a, a wedding of uh, of a hundred guests 
that each one has a place setting that's mermaid related. And you can create that bundle for 100 guests, for example, or do it in like, you know, um, for 20 guests, but that they can buy, you know, different variations of 20, 50, 100, et cetera. And that's your variation is the number of guests. So this is just kind of uh, digging around and playing around. Look at all these wedding dresses. So you could do uh, mermaid wedding accessories, for example. And this is just playing, which is what kids do, don't they? So we're going to just allow ourselves to be uh, big kids. Um, let's see, mermaid wedding theme and see what comes up. Look at all this mermaid wedding themed stuff. Images for wedding themes. So let's go over to image, Google Images and see what comes up here. Right? So all sorts of interesting, there's a bundle right there of a mer mermaid wedding theme. And look at the colors are all pretty much this sea foam green, the, the darker blue, the whites, right? Just like the, uh, the wig I have is the purple and the, and the green. So does everybody see how fun it can be, hopefully, um, to go ahead and just start playing around? Merchantwords.com. And Viral Launch also just started a new, um, they just launched a new keyword uh, research tool that I haven't played around with. Uh, but you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, let me come over here to Merchant Words and just type in um, mermaid party. See what happens. Who knows, right? Okay, so uh, almost 100,000 people typing in monthly mermaid party supplies. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, and then I'll just sort of scroll down and it'll be, there's decor, decorations, favors, plates, dress, right? So we have different uh, variations of mermaid. Make sense? So this is just playing a little bit, right? It's just having a little bit of fun and digging around. There's party banner, party favors, birthday party, um, yeah, themed uh, Mermaid party decoration for girls, mermaid wedding party. So you just play around with keywords to start seeing what that universe looks like. Okay, so let me come back over here to you guys and see what we got in the chat. Stop share. Okay, so um, just scroll up, see what we got. Uh, mermaid is an actual style of wedding gown. Oh, I didn't know that. See that? We just learned something new. What are you looking for discern mashup is big enough? Um, you know, I get that question a lot. And so what, what Terry's asking is, how do you know um, if a market is big enough to go after? And it's not necessarily the size of the market. It's also, that's one of the factors, but it's also how many competitors, how flooded is that market with products? So uh, how likely is it that you can compete in that market? Um, and also going after long tail keywords. So a smaller market, but you get a bigger piece of the market because you're targeting something even more niche. So there's, there's a balance um, and there's equations that you can do kind of in your head and it, sometimes you just have to test it out. I don't like markets that are so big that everybody knows about them that like, you know, kitchen spatulas. Yeah. Good luck competing in a kitchen spatula market or garlic presses, right? It's so, there's so many people that jump on that, um, that have jumped on it and they've used it as an example in every webinar for the past 10 years that it would be a silly, it might be a big book. Maybe there's a huge amount of keyword search volume, but there's also a huge amount of people selling um, that particular product or solution to that problem. So I wouldn't go after that market just because of the size. So it's, it's a balance, right? And we, we talk about that in the, in the bundle masterclass. We go a little bit deeper on how to really validate a market. Uh, so let's see, coming up with weird niches is fine. Question is how do you get the listing to the front where it can gather organic sales? Steve, that is a great question. Um, in this webinar, we are covering um, how to think more creatively, how to identify fanatical niche markets, just to kind of get some brainstorming and creativity tools uh, ingrained in you, how to validate those markets. And then in the Bundle Masterclass, we talk about um, everything from keyword research mo uh, to uh, uh, driving traffic off Amazon pay-per-click, really um, locking down your listing by um, doing deep keyword research, writing your listing properly so that we are uh, uh, really optimizing your listings to get the organic sales on that listing. Okay, so, and we'll talk about that um, outside of this webinar. So, uh, a lot of competition. I'm sorry if you guys were seeing a black screen. I apologize, but I'm going to go ahead and share screen again and come over here and continue with the presentation. So, we did a little live brainstorming. Now, let's talk about uh, more ways to find ideas. Okay, even more ways. 
So movies, what movies are being launched this year? What movies are coming out? Because you want to leverage uh, all of this advertising that's going to be done on the talk shows and on and television and print and Facebook groups and online. Um, these these movie theaters are, or these movie um, producers, they're going to do a ton of advertising. So that keyword searches is going to is going to pop, all right? Because the uh, awareness of that niche is going to is going to go up. So why not leverage and kind of ride the coattail of movie releases, TV shows when they're coming, you know, they're coming out with their new seasons, niche celebrations, um, celebrity birth and death, like the, you know, Elvis's birthday and the anniversary of Elvis's death, for example, um, uh, huge or like old movie, um, like the, you know, um, famous movies where they're coming back around. It's the 50th anniversary of any Julie Andrews movie, for example, just for example. Astronomical event, per, pil, uh, pilgrimages that happen once a year, uh, you know, full moon or blue moon, astronomical events, e-commerce, oh, the e-commerce event calendar. I'm um, actually including that in the Bundle Masterclass. So there's like 500 different dates of all sorts of really niche sporting events, but some fairly obscure sporting events or regional events and movies and TV shows and celebrations. All of that is an e-commerce event calendar with the Bundle Masterclass. So let's do some validation of these uh, one of these markets that we just played around with. So let's, uh, and here's how I do validation. So I use a couple of, there are a lot of keyword tools out here. These are just two that I use. I never look at just one tool. I like to gather my data from multiple different places uh, and, and then come to my own conclusion. So no tool is going to be 100% accurate. Uh, I just like to get a feel for that market and um, and kind of validate it from different ways. So Merchant Bullet Words, I really like, merchantwords.com. Viral Launch, like I said, just came out with a keyword tool I have not played with yet, uh, but I've heard a little bit about it. You can check that out. There's keyword.io, I believe. Again, I haven't played with it. There's Scope by Seller Labs, Labs anything by Seller Labs, I highly recommend. Love Jeff Cohen and the guys over there, Tyler. Uh, they do just a fabulous job um, with all of their products. Uh, what else? Oh, you can use Google Trends. Uh, you can use Google Keyword Tools, Amazon Predictive Search. Does everybody know what that is? When you type on Amazon, I'll show you real quick here. When you type on Amazon, let's say I typed in unicorn, what drops down is these search terms that people are uh, have the most volume of searches, right? So this tells me that more, a lot of people are searching for unicorn supplies, more people that are searching for unicorn, unicorn gifts and so on and so forth. And the same thing happens in Google. And it's called predictive search. When you go over to Google and you type in anything, it'll give you that predictive search dropdown. Okay, so there we go. These are the things that uh, are getting the most searches that start with the word unicorn. So starting here gets you an idea for like niches that you hadn't thought about, like a unicorn themed cake. Who'd have thought, right? Could you create a bundle? Of course you could. This is a trick question for all the cake supplies to make this ginormous unicorn themed wedding cake and all the tools to make that cake and right? So just as an idea. And that just came from doing this predictive search search. Okay, so um, Pinterest is a great place to get, uh, if you just start with like a, a broad keyword like uh, unicorn or uh, mermaid, right? And uh, people on Pinterest who are fanatical about it are posting things related to that but niche down. Facebook groups, find a unicorn Facebook group. People love unicorns. I bet you there's one on Facebook, if not multiple. And you can go in there and just start reading the posts. What are people talking about? If they love mermaids, and there's a mermaid group on Facebook, find out what they're discussing. And that tells you what their problems are in that market or what their passions are to get an idea to understand that market. Meetups, are there meetup groups around that niche market? Are there associations? Like they're actually circus performer association apparently. Um, trade shows, uh, is there a niche trade show for that particular market? Is there a niche trade show uh, for people in a certain, um, with a certain passion or a certain problem, okay? So let's live validate. We kind of already did that a little bit with, um, if you guys have a uh, kind of a, a market, a niche market idea, I'm gonna check here in the chat. I will take one of your ideas out of the chat and we're gonna go and use some of these tools real quick and, uh, and help validate that. And we'll practice validating. Okay, uh, does the masterclass have a list of national trade shows? Yes, it is almost launched and it, it will include its, uh, several thousand 
niche trade shows uh, all over the world for all different size, sorts of niches that you'd never even think about. Um, and each of those trade shows has a list of vendors on their website. So you can go check out the, the vendors to get um, uh, sourcing ideas. Okay, so let's go ahead. How about music for children with autism? That's very, very niche. So um, let's find something uh, niche here that might be real fast to validate because some take a little bit more time to validate because they're a little bit um, deeper. So canning, here we go, senior housing and solar panels. Is that two different niches? Um, how about solar panels pretty big? Let me find a niche that will we can validate fairly quickly. Uh, Irish mermaids, kind of interesting. Let me scroll up here, see what else we got. Dolphin paper, we had C. Um, it's interesting. Corporate librarians, accountant salespeople. Give me some niche market food for truckers, organization for truckers. Uh, vegan clothing. That's interesting. I never heard of that. So I've never heard of this market, but we have a niche market in the chat vegan clothing. And because we know nothing about it, it might actually be, you know, something, but we need to validate that idea. It sounds cool, but what do I know? Until we validate it, we won't know. So let me share the screen and let's validate. So let's just start for giggles on Google and put in vegan clothing and see, oh wow, so there's the predictive search. Brand stores, companies line, blogger material, stores near me, websites, shoes, interesting. So let's just hit vegan clothing and see how many searches come up. We've got, now these are ads, 90, almost, what, 90 million, 700,000. That's only, oh, that's crazy. Wow, who'd have thought, right? So just scroll down and start looking. Herbivore clothing, there's another keyword. And you wanna start making a keyword list. In the bundle masterclass, we've got a, uh, a bundle planner and part of that planner, it's a spreadsheet. You just start copying and pasting all of these keywords. Now I know nothing about this market, I never heard of it. So I would start capturing these keywords like herbivore and vegan, clothing, shoes, etc. And then I'd start looking for other keywords, vegan fashion. So fashion would be another one, Far, farm fat, eh, sanctuary. Vegan clothing and accessories, online vegan store. Let's go check this out, right? This is kind of interesting. Organic, that would be another keyword. So this is just a store called Earthly with double Ys that apparently um, their niche market is people who are interested in vegan clothing. So I would just start looking through here. It's like, wow, okay, first of all, this is pretty solid. Um, and then I might do something like this. Vegan association or how about a trade show let's try a vegan trade show and see what comes up whoops trade show that doesn't work trade show 2000 and look at these people searching for it so apparently there's multiple trade shows so here are plant-based vegan festivals trade shows wow right so let's say you create a, a, a bundle um, for this market of whatever product couldn't you go to these festivals and set up a booth for example, or advertise in their newsletter with a link to your Amazon product. So do some off Amazon advertising through these associations and trade shows and festivals, etc. So the, that's just some ideas on how to um, use off Amazon. Uh, but yeah, I think we've, we've validated this market as a big one. Now I'm going to come over here to, um, to Merchant Words because Merchant Words is going to pull what people are searching for on Amazon. So this looks like a thing. So I'm really curious to see what people are searching for and buying on Amazon. So we'll just type in vegan clothing, but I bet there's vegan food too, right? So to almost 24,000 searches a month on vegan clothing plus clothes for women. Vegan workout clothes. Did you see that? That's kind of interesting right there. Hmm. Vegan baby clothes. This is crazy cool. Look at this. Vegan dog clothes. That's very interesting because the other keywords you'd have for this are organic. So let's just go with that. Now I'm going down a rabbit hole, right? And I'm, we're gonna do vegan dog clothes, right? Vegan dog clothes and see what comes up. And then um, see if we have organic, organic. See, I'm kind of doing a mashup between vegan and organic plus dog clothes, right? There's or, dog clothes organizer. We're back to organizers. I didn't even think about this, guys. During the mashup we did with organization tools, it didn't occur to me that there would be 20,000 people almost searching for dog clothing organizer on Amazon. Okay, so we just discovered a whole new target market, well, new to us, right? But 
this is a search that, um, that a lot, almost 20,000 people are searching for on Amazon a month for dog clothes organizer or organic dog clothes, another 11,000 people. So I would say we have done a really quick validation that this is a market we want to explore further. Would you guys agree? Let me come back over here to the chat and see what y'all are saying in here. Um, why would there be dog clothes? I have no idea. Um, vegan means no animals. I think it's the clothing that's vegan, not the dogs. Um, so surgical technologists and accessories with dog hair knitted items count as vegan. I have no ideas. I have no idea. But all of these questions you're asking about this market, what do you guys want to do? You want to go to Facebook and you want to find um, a, a group of people who are interested in, in dogs and having their dogs eat vegan or organic food, and which means they're, they're probably also having them wear vegan clothing, like clothing that's been, I, I don't know. Okay, so don't ask all the questions about dogs and vegans in here because I can't answer it, but they're great questions for you to go start searching with tonight. I think this is a really interesting market. Thank you, a shout out to whoever uh, uh, put your vegan clothing. It start, you, your name doesn't show up all the way, it starts with a W. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that. Whitman Magruder, shout out to you for vegan clothing idea. Uh, this is a market that I think uh, some of you folks need to look into and start, um, Google is your friend, start on Google and start looking at what this market's all about and understanding, forget about the product, for right now. I want you to understand why people are buying these products. What's important to them? Why are they buying them? And answer that question by doing your research. What, what is important to this person who's going to buy that little doggy vest that's made, you know, vegan or organic? And just start with that. And don't do product research yet. We are in the, the niche market validation stage. Okay, make sense? Okay, so I'm really glad that you guys are, are being so... Um, um, so interactive in the chat, and I will save this chat and get it up to the Facebook group so that y'all can um, go over. I'm going to uh, put it in the group, www.facebook.com slash groups slash deal diva, and go ahead and, uh, and join that group and ask all of these questions and continue the conversation there, and I will interact there as well so we can continue this vegan doggy clothes conversation. How cool is this? Okay, so we're going to um, go back and almost done with this presentation, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there and for being so interactive. You rock. All right, so Bundle Masterclass. You guys know that I've created this Bundle Masterclass. Uh, this is my st six-step approach that all starts with uh, doing fanatical niche research, doing customer-centric research before you ever look at any product. It's completely upside down from what, um, what you've probably learned about bundling is, you know, go to the dollar store, buy a bunch of stuff, stick it in a poly, throw it in Amazon, and kerplunk, it doesn't sell. So I've just given you um, a, a sample of what I teach in the class about how to really do brainstorming for niche markets that you didn't even know existed. We just did it live, unscripted, and found a cool market that none of us knew existed except for uh, the person who posted it. Um, we validated it quasi, and if we had a couple more hours, we could go even deeper, and by the, you know, by the end of um, tomorrow, have a bundle concept built out. But we don't have that time on the webinar, so I wanna offer you the Bundle Masterclass. So of course, as I, uh, as all of your customers are going to ask you in regards to your bundles, what's in it for me? And you have to be able to answer that question. I'm going to answer that question to you about the bundle masterclass. Uh, so the bundle masterclass, it is a membership. Uh, I'm sorry, it is it is a lifelong access, and it is a, uh, a membership format, a membership um, a platform, so that you have different modules and different lessons within the module, plus exercises in the module. Plus you also, and this is a screenshot of what that membership program looks like. And it's a combination of uh, uh, different types of videos because I believe they're in, in hitting different learning styles. So you'll get the one that is just um, slides with bullet points, right? And then you'll get these live, uh, off the wall, unscripted brainstorming um, sessions that are peppered throughout the course. And the course is uh, over 42 videos and always being added to. So you get lifetime access, and every time something updates with Amazon, I am on it because I am a live uh, Amazon seller. I, I do this with you. I'm in the trenches. I'm learning uh, uh, all the time, and I'm bringing all new knowledge to you guys as I learn it and as I explore. So it's, it's kind of a, it's a moving course that is always going to be growing. So you lock it in for the, the price that it is right now, and you get lifetime access for this and 
the private Facebook group. You get 42 and a half lessons. I think there's actually more than 42 lessons now because this is going in there as well. Plus I've got a, um, a niche grocery bundle. Uh, I'm, I'm doing a niche grocery bundle uh, a lesson in there as well. I'm adding that. And I have a list of lessons that I'm rolling out um, as, I, as I create them. We'll, that will be incorporated in the class. Uh, niche market discovery and valuation. You just saw it live. Uh, customer needs discovery, product opportunity. I show you how to source wholesale, private label, uh, print your brand on the products. Once you've tested a bundle, you can you can just you know buy fifty dollars worth of products and test six of that one bundle just to test it. And then when it hits, you can scale up and get bigger. You don't have to invest thousands of dollars in product to get started with bundling. You and I actually, in fact, I recommend that you start small to test a concept, learn, make mistakes. Um, you know, revamp what you're doing, tweak what you're doing, get really good at it, and then uh, scale up. And I show you how to do that in the class. Um, supplier negotiation, how to get the best prices, how to get free shipping, right? How to work with your suppliers so that uh, they want to work with you and they want to help you be more successful by um, working deals with you. Vertical product creation, and we just talked a little bit about that. So that would be the mashups. So if, you, if let's say you have an organization bundle that you built out, but you can put one other piece and you have one um, core product in that bundle, but then you can modify that bundle with additional pieces to meet different niche markets. But then you can leverage economies of scale for that one core piece that maybe is the most expensive piece, and you can buy a thousand of them, but have 10 different versions of that bundle. Does that make sense? But you're getting the thousand product price instead of the 10 product price or 100 product price. Make sense? Okay, com competition proof your bundle, how to lock it down, how to put a custom piece in your bundles that adds value to that bundle, to that niche market. It adds value. There's no key, you know, stuffing, whatever, a keychain and a grocery bundle that some people do. Again, we want to, we want to follow Amazon's rules, which say, Amazon waits, wants to make their customer, they want to delight them. It's customer service is number one, and they want the customer service experience to be amazing. And it's our job to help them do that by creating bundles that add value, that create, that create this experience. So when people see our listing, they say, take my money, and they hit the buy button. Okay, know your numbers. It's also about uh, you need to know what your numbers are um, so that your bundles make sense and that you make money on them. And you need to have a set of criteria that you follow. So, uh, you know, what should your optimal sales price be? What kind of profit are you looking for? I look for minimum $10 each bundle. Uh, listing creation and optimization. So how to really, somebody was asking that in the chat, how do I get organic growth? And we talk about um, how to do your, do your research so good up front that when your listing starts and that product hits um, the Amazon's warehouse, that you will get organic sales if you've done that pre-research first. Creating sales traction, doing off Amazon ads, and I, I mentioned a couple of little ideas uh, on how to get, you can do Facebook ads, Reddit ads, uh, you can partner with um, organizations that have large followers, association members for your niche market, and say, look, you know, we'll uh, give you a, a commission for, you know, we'll give you the affiliate link, um, so you make a little bit of money if you send people in an ad through your newsletter to this um, to, to our product on Amazon, for example. One example, there are um, I have a whole entire uh, module with multiple lessons on how to create sales traction on and off Amazon. Automation and delegation. After you're done, your idea, um, you're creating the ideas, your, your, your uh, um, responsibility with creating product is to be the creative force is to say, okay, here, let me look for product ideas. And then the putting it together, um, you shouldn't be handling that product anymore at a certain point in your business. So how to work with a prep center, how to choose a prep center, is actually we include a directory of prep centers in there. And you, work, you don't have to work with just one. You can work with multiple prep centers depending on where your product's being shipped from, right? Where your wholesaler is, is it East Coast or West Coast? Where, where is that being shipped in from? Okay, so Bundle Masterclass, you get, here's the Bundle Master template. This is just some, some added extras. You've got negotiation uh, forms in there. We have checklists for every part of the process. You get live videos like this where I show you a puppet bundle that I put together, for example. But then I did a mashup um, with the puppets, and I also sold them as the same exact bundle to golfers. So I went to uh, Goodwill and I bought two golf clubs, a little putter and a big, you know, wood thingy. I'm not a golfer, so I don't know what it's called, a driver, I think, to make sure that these puppets fit over. And then I repackaged and repurposed the exact same product, these six puppets, as covers for golf club 
right? As a, as a gift set for golf club covers, whatever, right? So I teach you how to do that in the bundle masterclass. You get a private Facebook group. There's hundreds of people in here, um, all the way from beginners in bundling, all the way through um, successful bundlers like uh, uh, who have who've been in there for, you know, since the beginning and who will help you and answer questions. It's not just me. I believe in the power of a group and power of crowdsourcing answers uh, because everybody's got a diff different perspective on things, right? And you do too, and adding your voice to this private group is actually gonna create the value um, for everybody coming in uh, with you at this time. So let's just do the math, because I am a numbers person, yes, I'm a creative person too, but I run a business. This is a business, all right, this is not a hobby. And we are in this to make money, right? I know you are too. So let's just look at some numbers. And by the way, I try to create um, 10 bu new bundle concepts a month, minimum. And I'm so used to creating now in my head that I, I can probably do a whole lot more of that when I scale. But 10 bundles a month. So even if you just create 10 bundles for the rest of the year, that's it, just 10 bundles. And you sell 50 of them in a month, and you net, net, after Amazon fees, after prep center fees, after mailing it to Amazon, there's $10 bill in your pocket. That equals $5,000 net monthly, monthly profit. That's 60 grand net annually for 10 bundles that you've done your, your work up front and that are selling only 50 a month. I, I know that that's um, doable because I've been doing it. So I believe that it's doable for you too when you learn the right way to bundle, when you learn um, how to do customer centric research up front before you ever touch a product. So uh, here's just a, a few of the people who are in the Bundle Masterclass, um, seasoned Amazon sellers to newbies who are in the course, uh, who, uh, you know, when they first came into the course, they were like, okay, well, we bundled a few things, and we know how to do this, and then they took the course and recognized that my model is completely different from any other approach that you've had. Um, and here's, you also get a bunch of bonuses. So I'm gonna give you a trade show calendar of niche trade shows. Somebody was asking in the chat, um, you know, how to find uh, trade shows for these niches, that, that comes with it. I give you that directory. I'm going to give you a cheat sheet of 100 more niche markets, um, a supplier directory of actually it's 295 wholesale sources where you can get bundled products, like uh, in every single category. I include, include that in there with all contact information for those wholesale sources. And what I do is I go and I have a VA sign up for all of their websites, so I start getting emails from all of these wholesale suppliers. So when they have sales and when they do like free shipping or you know 20% off your order in the pet category for the next seven days, I get those emails so I can take advantage of, of those discounts to decrease the cost of my bundles, to increase, of course, my profit margin. Niche market validation checklist, tons of checklists, how to, you wanna track your competitors because you wanna know your space and that just doesn't mean just knowing your target market, it means knowing who is selling what to your target market. Who else is selling things? What are they selling? And how well are those things selling? So you want to track that too. That's a number that you need, a statistic that you need in order to understand the entire universe of your niche market that you're going after for that bundle. How to negotiate with suppliers, exercises. I believe um, I learn best when I learn something and then implement. Then I learn something and then implement. So I, I think that's, uh, that's how most people learn best is, uh, and be able to retain that data. Because how many of you have, uh, you have this whole like shelf of shelfware, right, instead of educationware, and it's, you buy all these courses, and you, you, maybe you don't consume them at all, they sit. Or you consume them all at once, and then you go on to something else, and you didn't get it into your brain. You know, you didn't, your mind didn't have time to kind of congeal it and implement it. So I have exercises at the end of each module and throughout the modules to help you practice, just like we did in this webinar, where I had you engage in the chat, so that you can start taking this information I'm giving you and making it your own in your business and adding your own ideas to it. And then I've got discounts off of all of the next sell, uh, level seller tools that I use. And I only have, I have interviews with um, a lot of folks who are doing like different types of advertising that maybe I don't know Pinterest advertising, but I've got an interview in there, an entire um, a lesson, our lesson on Pinterest advertising by someone who does it for a living. And so other, you know, Anita Breeze, some of you, if you're Canadian, uh, you know Anita, she's actually written the, a book on bundling for Canadians, and she entered my course, and she's so good at seasonal bundles. And there's actually an entire hour lesson where Anita comes in and teaches us seasonal bundling. Now, I teach how to create bundles that will give you consistent income year round. I want that consistent income base in my business. And then you can add seasonal bundles on top of that to get that pop, you know, during the Valentine's and Mother's Day and Easter, etc. Um, so 
here's what also what you get because you're on this webinar you came in from a link by following Dan and Eric of the wholesale formula so you are here from Dan and Eric as a recommendation from them. So they are including, as part of this offer that ends tonight, they are including their own bonus, which is a list that we're gonna pull up by Friday, because I wanted them to pull it fresh. A list of the top 100,000 products that are selling on Amazon right now. The top 100 selling products on Amazon. And we will pull that spreadsheet uh, tomorrow and email it out to everybody who, who registers, who enrolls for the Bundle Masterclass tonight, um, you get that by Friday and that's just a bonus from Dan and Eric that is not a publicly available product or a bonus to anybody else it's just for you guys because you're on this webinar and register tonight by 11 59 p.m. bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF and that will tell my system that you came in from this webinar and that you are eligible to get that discount or get that um, that uh, uh, ASIN list from Dan and Eric, and that ASIN list will be coming from me, but go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF, sorry, I'm slurring my words, bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF, and that will tell my system that you came in from this webinar so that you will get that uh, top 100,000 products. And uh, I will actually do a, a video specifically teaching you how are you gonna use those 100,000, what does that mean, right? We'll show you how to get bundle ideas from those top selling products where you're not actually selling that specific product because it might be way too competitive and you can't get a wholesale account from that branded product, but it will give you ideas for niche markets that you didn't consider that have so many people searching for those keywords that there might be bundles you can bring to that same market without competing against or being on any of those listings as a wholesale supplier. So um, go ahead and sign up for bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF tonight by midnight. I'm going to scooch over here to the chat and start answering some questions for you guys. So go ahead and ask your questions um, as they relate to product. Oh, there we go. There you go. Um, oh, thank you. Louise Davis says this is a great course. Thank you, Louise. I appreciate that feedback. Uh, I worked really hard on it and I continue to work hard on it. It's, um, you know, every time I learn something new, I bring that content into the course. So it's always, uh, there's always something new to learn. So Heather asks, how often do you feel niche markets change, like run their course? Well, um, Heather, it doesn't matter what I feel. It's all about the numbers. So if uh, something that's hit for you really good, let's say mermaids is just a phase, you know, it's just a fad, and it's selling gangbusters for you and doing really great, and then suddenly it starts waning, and you tweak your listing and you run some ads, but you're finding that it's not, maybe it's becoming saturated now, or it, people are over it, you know, they're just done with it, right? Like emojis or, you know, Cabbage Patch Kids, whatever, right? they're done with it. Um, so you just find another bundle, you know, you find another niche market, you, you find another fanatical niche market. This is not a, a, a set it and forget it thing. None of Amazon has set it and forget it, right? You, you always do need to be on top of your business um, and always being that one step ahead of your competitors. And that's hopefully what, um, what I accomplished in the Bundle Masterclass. A lot of content. Yes, Peter, I know. Uh, I give a lot of content on my webinars, and I hope you all take in notes. I do speak fast, but it's because I really want to give as much as I can in that short time. Um, so read the 1159 cutoff is Eastern Central. It is, um, it's Eastern time. I think that's more whatever, 1159. I guess uh, 1159 Eastern makes sense. Um, we just change time zones, and I'm in Arizona, and uh, we don't change time. So I'm not sure what time zone I'm in right now. Um, is your wholesale list on the specific side? No, Connie, that wholesale list of almost 300 uh, wholesale companies is across the board because I want you to have uh, resources for what, it doesn't matter what your niche market is, I wanted to give you a starting point, but you're not gonna rely on the wholesale list. You, I am teaching you in that class also. I, there's a live webinar on, you look over my shoulder of how to find suppliers for whatever niche you're in. Right? And you can even, I've got an upgrade option that's not advertised, but let's say you're stuck and you really need help with your specific niche, you can hire for me, me for an hour where we do a private one-on-one -on -one coaching and we, I, I, we go find suppliers for you and we validate the, the, um, the niche together on, on a webinar like this. Okay, so uh, guys, stop looking at the time and go register. Don't, don't overthink this. It's 9.17 p.m. Eastern now. Right. Jenna, I welcome you into the Bundle Masterclass course. Please come on in. Looking forward to having you. Um, the bonus expires tonight. 
So let's see, several listens. Um, let's find a question here that's easy to answer related to niche market research. Is the Buckle Masterclass on a website? Yes, Cynthia, it is delivered on a website, um, which is its own membership program. So you log into that website and you'll go through the modules at your own pace. Uh, I highly encourage you, of course, to do the exercises as you go through it because it will help you learn. But then there's this uh, our private Facebook group. So if you get stuck, I have a question, or um, like just this week, I found this new packaging company. Uh, I mean, not new, but it's new to me that I'm looking into for a private label product that I'm, I'm building, and they looked really great, and their products were awesome, their prices were good, and I posted that in the private group. So as I find stuff, as I build out my bundles and my private label brand, I'll bring that information and those resources into the private group, um, which is, and you'll get other people answering your questions in that group too and sharing their ideas. So uh, let's see. We don't want general niches, if that's what you're talking about, Connie. Uh, let's see. Um, are there any live webinars in the course? Uh, so Cynthia, this uh, there are uh, many webinars in the course just like this that are recorded lives. And when I find new stuff, like I might do a live grocery webinar, but then record it and put that in the course. So sometimes you're live, and sometimes you know if I'm recording a, um, a training at three o'clock in the morning. You guys probably aren't going to be up at 3 a.m. I wouldn't do that to you, but that's the time that I'm, you know, I'm alive and awake, and I want to, I want to create some new content. So some of them are live, and uh, most of them are at your own access. So you don't need to be anywhere at any time. You can go at your own pace. Uh, so uh, Connie's looking for party supplies. Have a look through many of them to see if they have them. Uh, yeah, you know, that's just about a matter of asking better questions in your Google searches. Uh, did not purchase the whole uh, teach. So uh, it doesn't matter if you purchase the wholesale formula or not. Um, I am actually a student of the wholesale formula. I love their course. And they um, have, saw my course and they took a look at it and they said they wanted to offer this to everybody who knew them and was uh, in their tribe. So it doesn't matter if you're a student of the wholesale formula or not. You will still get this ASIN list um, by uh, signing up for the bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. Uh, so do you teach everything step by step? So I, I teach a six step approach uh, that I showed in the outline of how to how to bring a bundle from concept from a, a niche um, market concept all the way through um, validation, uh, product sourcing, locking down your bundle to com competition proof it, doing your own advertising off and on, um, and then uh, 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 kind of some adva advanced marketing strategy, and then automating the process. I do not teach. Um, deep wholesale formula style um, wholesale sourcing, uh, but there is a portion of the web. There is a portion in the in the course on how to find products wholesale. Okay, so this is not a product first based system. This is an understanding fanatical niche markets first before you ever get to product sourcing. And I know it's a little bit of a mind shift, but um, when you get into module one of the bundle masterclass, module one really hits that home in every single lesson. Because once you get that down, every other part of your business, regardless of how you're sourcing, is, is gonna change because of this, this, uh, this approach, this customer-centric approach mindset. So, hey guys, uh, thank you so much for being on. I wanted to, um, uh, no, there is not a payment uh, installment plan, but, um, and here's the thing, you know, then I would have to uh, hire someone to manage all that, you know, to, to go after people and set that up and whatever. So eventually I'd have to raise the price of the course. Or, so I don't want to have that piece. I just want one price. But what you can do is use your credit card and use your credit card company as the installment plan and pay off your credit card in payments, right? Instead of having me do the installment plan. Um, my, my forte is creating this amazing content. And that's what I want to stay focused on, uh, not become a financing company. So there's no installment plans for me, but you can use your credit card company to take care of that. Do I speak more slowly in the class? Kate, yes, very much so. I do have the ability to slow down. Uh, there are also, there's a Chrome extension that you can plug into your Chrome browser and you can speed up or slow down any video that you're playing in Chrome. So uh, yes, I do slow down. I just wanted to gush a lot of information at you during this particular webinar. So thank you guys. I am going to save this chat here. Do we accept PayPal or debit transfer? Uh, yeah, actually, um, yeah, you can pay by PayPal. Go to bundlemasterclass.com slash TWF. Go to enroll now, and it gives you the option to, uh, to pay through your PayPal. Uh, if I have volume, volume product that has a bundle potential, can I work the process backwards? Sure. As long as you, before you ever send anything into Amazon, I can't drive this home hard enough, folks. 
Uh, I want you to be successful, so I'm going to keep driving it home hard. You must understand the passions and or the problems of your target market before you send anything to Amazon in order to increase your chance of that product selling. So deep product, deep understanding of a niche market is absolutely crucial before you buy any product. So if you can get just that down, um, I will have done my job tonight on this webinar. So thank you all for being here. I go over to facebook.com slash deal uh, slash groups slash deal diva, deal diva. And I will continue to answer questions there. And um, thank you so much. I, I just wanted to honor your time and not, not kind of go over um, more than like the hour and a quarter we've been and honor your time. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I look forward to seeing you in the bundle masterclass. I'm so excited that uh, we're going to be bundling together. Woo, let's bundle. And um, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for being on. Bye.